Christmas blessings to you on this first Sunday of Christmas tide. Welcome to worship here at First Congregational Church for a service of morning prayer and Holy Communion. I'm the Reverend Emily Krauss Corzine, Associate Minister here. I am joined by music minister Kevin Jones for this time together. We welcome you no matter where you are and where you are on life's journey. We're glad that you're here with us this morning. We'll celebrate communion later in the service, so please find a communion elements available to you in your house so that you may participate and join in this sacrament. If you are interested in being part of our faith community, we encourage you to reach out to one of us, uh, either Reverend Tim Ahrens, the senior minister, or myself, that we help you get engaged in the life of First Church. We are a community of faith here in downtown Columbus, rooted in social justice and witness in this community. And so we'd love for you to get to know more about us and for us to get to know you. So we're glad that you joined us in this season where we celebrate the joy of Christ coming into the world. You may find information for this worship service on our website, www.first-church.org. You'll also have an opportunity to um, return an offering later in the service, and you can go to our website again and click on the gift prompt, uh, which is on the website, or the QR code, which is printed in the bulletin. Follow along and worship together. Let us worship God. Let us go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which God has made known to us. O God, open our lips, and our mouths shall proclaim your praise. Praise to the holy and undivided Trinity, one God. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. join in the psalm of the day from Psalm 148. Alleluia! Praise God from the heavens. Sing praise in the heights. Praise God, all you angels. Sing praise, all the heavenly hosts. Praise God, sun and moon. Sing praise, all you shining stars. Praise God, heaven of heavens, and you waters above the heavens. Let them praise the name of God by whose command they were created. God made them stand fast forever and ever, and gave them a law which shall not pass away. Praise God from the earth, you sea monsters and all deeps. Fire and hail, snow and fog, tempestuous wind doing God's will. Mountains and all hills, fruit trees and all cedars. Wild beasts and all cattle, creeping things. Sovereigns of the earth and all peoples, leaders and all rulers of the world. Young men and maidens, old and young together. Let them praise your name, O God, for your name only is exalted. Your splendor is over earth and heaven. You have raised up strength for your people and praise for all your loyal servants, the children of Israel, a people who are near you. Alleluia. Alleluia. We, we reconcile ourselves to each other in our relationships. We reconcile ourselves to God. And we do that through Jesus Christ. And as we share the peace of Christ with one another, may we reconcile ourselves to each other and to God. The peace of God be always with you. And also, also with you. you. Let us share the peace of Christ with one another. Peace be with you. Good morning, everyone. 
I'm so glad that you tuned in after this Sunday, after uh, we celebrated Christmas. I hope you had a wonderful day with family, probably a little different than what you have remembered having as a Christmas day. But we gather together in a new season, a new season called Christmas Tide, in which we celebrate Jesus in the world. And so the past weeks during the season of Advent, we have been lighting these Advent candles, one for each week, preparing us for Christ to come into the world. And on Christmas Eve, we lit the center candle. We call it the Christ candle, for the light of the world comes in on Christmas. The light comes into the world and into our hearts and into our lives so that we may take that light into the world as well. So I found a book uh, that has the images of God talking about light. And I thought I would share these words with you this morning. It's about God being light. And remember, on Christmas, God is with us. The word is Emmanuel, and God comes into the world to be with us. God is light. Here are these words. And I'll show you this image at the end. There we go. God is light. God is light so dazzling that our eyes cannot look at it. The beauty of each day, the rays of the sun, the kindness and joy that lights up a face, the hope and the happiness that brighten our days. All these reflect a little of God's light. And so as you light a candle this Christmas and in the weeks ahead, you light the Christ candle and ask for God's light to come into your life and into your family's life. But don't leave it there. Make sure that you light the rest of the world as you go out and are kind and joyful and caring to others. It's a wonderful time of year to celebrate God's light that comes into the world. So be, be the light that God brings into the world as well. Peace be with you. Have a wonderful week, and we'll see you again in the new year next week. Peace be with you. A reading from the book of Isaiah, chapter 61. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being shall exult in my God, for he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness, as a bridegroom decks himself with a garland, and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the earth brings forth its shoots, and as a garden causes what is sown in it to spring up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all the nations. For Zion's sake, I will not keep silent, and for Jerusalem's sake, I will not rest, until her vindication shines out like the dawn, and her salvation like a burning torch. The nations shall see your vindication, and all the kings your glory, and you shall be called by a new name that the mouth of the Lord will give. You shall be a crown of beauty in the hand of the Lord, and a royal diadem in the hand of your God. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
A reading from the Gospel according to Luke, chapter 2. When the time came for their purification according to the laws of Moses, they brought him up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord, as it is written in the law of the Lord. Every firstborn male shall be designated as holy to the Lord. And they offered a sacrifice according to what is stated in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout, looking forward to the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit rested on him. And it had, it had been revealed to him by this Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Guided by the Spirit, Simeon came to the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what was customary under the law, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Master, now you are dismissing your servant in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have paired in the presence of all peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people Israel. And the child's father and mother were amazed at what was being said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to his mother Mary, this child is destined for the falling and the rising of many in Israel and to be a sign that will be opposed so that the inner thoughts of many will be revealed, and a sword will pierce your own soul too. There also was a prophet, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel, from the tribe of Asher. She was of great age, having lived with her husband seven years after her marriage, then as a widow to the age of 84. She never left the temple, but worshiped there with fasting and prayer night and day. At the moment she came and began to praise God and to speak about the child to all who were looking for the redemption of Jerusalem. When they had finished everything required by the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee, to their own town of Nazareth. The child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favor of God was upon him. Excuse me. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord, our rock and our salvation. Amen. The story is told of a Christmas Eve children's time at my home church in Cambridge, Ohio. The pastor constructed a wooden manger, filled it with straw, and brought in the baby doll wrapped in a blanket. The manger was perched on the top step of the chancel and it angled downward onto the next step so that the congregation could see baby Jesus. That night he invited the children to join him around the manger. Then a church member dressed like a shepherd came walking in the center aisle. And when the shepherd got to the manger, he joined the pastor and started to share the experience of that first Christmas Eve. 
He told what the angel said to him and the other shepherds about finding a baby in a manger and that he would be the Messiah. As the shepherd told the story, the children were so engaged, they kept leaning toward the manger to get as close as they possibly could to the baby Jesus. It was a beautiful moment, all the children leaning in with wonder until the right leg of the manger broke and the manger toppled to the ground. It, and out popped the baby Jesus and tumbled down the chancel steps. Without any prompting from the shepherd or the pastor, without saying a word, the children quickly got up and went down the steps. Some picked up the now unswaddled baby Jesus. Others picked up pieces of straw. A few others gathered the pieces of the manger and put it back together on the top step. Now, after the manger was reassembled and the baby Jesus gently placed back in the manger, the children all gathered around the shepherd. As he regained focus and continued the story, the children leaned in again to see Jesus. I love that story. It's a great Christmas story. And it carries with us into the days after Christmas, and here's why. It captures several essential truths about the world and about us. Things fall apart. Mangers break. Relationships unravel. Friendships fade. Our bodies fail. Plans change. Truces don't hold. Civility breaks down. Our minds wander and our hearts break. Certainties collapse, things unravel, and life spills out down the stairs. Things fall apart, sometimes through our no fault of our own, despite our best intentions. And I think one of those, uh, those of you experiencing this Christmas in the pandemic of 2020, those experiencing Christmas this year just feels like things sometimes fall apart because the last year has been about things falling apart, our hopes and anticipations being broken. Coronavirus and quarantine, the reckoning of racial relationships in our communities and in our country. Perhaps your parent died, or your marriage ended, or your significant other broke up with you, or the person who you, who you relied on to hold things together it's gone. Things fall apart. In the larger world, things fall apart. The wheels come off the bus. And here's what William Falk, editor-in-chief of the magazine The Week, is a periodical's year-end issue last year, a couple years ago, actually, summarizing this particular moment. Ours is a country founded on hope, he says, but Americans seem to be increasingly defined by what we fear. What frightens you more, he asks. Too much surveillance or too little? Climate change or intrusive government regulation? Police brutality or lawlessness? Vaccine or no vaccine? So no matter where you place yourself on a political spectrum, things fall apart. The center that we once knew isn't holding. So what do you do when things fall apart? Well, there are lots of options. You can look around and see who or what is to blame and get mad. Or you can withdraw in isolation. Or you can do what the kids did that Christmas Eve. You can pick up the pieces and try to put things back together with glue or duct tape or love and hope, or anything else that, will br that, that, can bring up, that you can bring to this task. You try to put things together. You don't have to give up on the world. We choose hope over fear. We choose love over hate. We start over. We commit ourselves, our gifts, our time, our energy toward repairing the relationships in our lives and repairing the world. We can do our small part. 
We can make a phone call or we can show up on someone's doorstep and stay socially distant. We can make time to go to a rally or send a card or a postcard. We can volunteer for a mission initiative. Or we can go caroling at a retirement community. Think about that. We could Zoom a little bit, go to a drive-by birthday celebration. One of the fond memories I have this time of year was a opportunity at a service club in high school. And we would go caroling at a local retirement community. And our group went up to the health center. And many of the individuals there weren't doing all that well. And we did sing carols. That's all we did. We didn't always sing them particularly well. That didn't really matter. A woman who couldn't remember her own name sang every word with us. A man who hadn't lifted his head up in weeks clapped his hands in joy. And all of us who went knew that we had the great privilege of playing a tiny role in repairing the world, in mending part of their hearts that were broken, one carol at a time. And when we put our, we do our part to put things back together. That's not all the kids did that night. They also leaned in. They leaned in and tried to get as close to Jesus as they could. And when they do that, when we do that, when we le live our life in which we try to get as close to Jesus as we can, when we try to live a life shaped by his life, by what matters to him, by loving God and loving neighbor, things will still fall apart, but things will also turn out okay, more or less. That Christmas night, the shepherd concluded his words by saying this. It was a glorious scene that night in Bethlehem. We all gathered around the baby Jesus. We gave thanks and praised God for the great gift that had come down from heaven. All we need to lean in and to see Jesus, to get us close to Jesus this night and every night. And I think that's well said, shepherd. That baby Jesus couldn't stay in that manger on a Christmas night. That Jesus can't stay in the manger today or in the weeks to follow. Jesus is out into the world. His parents couldn't keep him in that place, and the world couldn't keep him in. Each and every day, Jesus goes out into the world, into a world that is broken and bruised, hurting and harmed, and Jesus with us in tow, brings to the world that love and peace and that joy and that hope that no one else can give. It's this baby who we follow out of these doors and into the world. And on this first Sunday of Christmas, we remember that our task is to not stay where we are, but to go into the world, the world that God loves. The, girl, the world that God loves so much that God sends Jesus into it, into our neighborhoods and into our lives. And God will not give up on it or on us. Moreover, God continues to come to love and bless the very world that we live in and invites us to do the same. Merry Christmas. Amen. God be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have given us the word in flesh. Let the word be the wisdom for all that we do in our lives. Through Jesus Christ, this word, who reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
We pray, O oh God, for our world. We pray for those who are suffering from the coronavirus pandemic and who find themselves isolated during this time without family or friends nearby. We mourn the loss of loved ones in our communities, in our community of faith, in our nation and in the world who have lost their lives to this virus and also loved ones who are now gone. And as people face the dawning of a new year, help us to cling fast to your love, your love that can bring us together. We ask, O oh God, that you help to mend our relationships that are broken. Heal us in body, mind, or spirit, whatever ails us this day, whatever ails those whom we love. May your presence this Christmas season be upon us, and may we live in the joy of knowing that Christ is among us. We name to you those who we know and those who are known only to you. We lift them in our prayers this day. We name what is on our hearts, aloud or in silence. And we leave space for those things that are too difficult to name aloud, but trust that God will hear us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Eternal God, our beginning and our end, be our starting point and our haven, and accompany, accompany us in this day's journey. Use our hands to do the work of your creation, and use our lives to bring others the new life you give this world in Jesus Christ, Redeemer of all. Amen. Amen. At First Church, every Sunday we take an offering for a mission or ministry working on issues of justice and mercy. That can be national, that could be international, or that could be close to home. And this morning, we offer a new um, offering this morning for J. Jaira Development Center. And that group, the mission of that group, is to improve the quality of life on the East Main Street Corridor on the Near East Side of Columbus. It's a community of housing and economic development planning and coordinating of services and other community building activities. They have been serving the East Main Street community since 2010. These initiatives that they have are designated to attract employment opportunities, to increase the supply of goods and affordable housing, and also to foster a nice and safe community. It's a landing place for many who are coming out of incarceration and trying to find job, rebuild their job skills and finding employment. So our offering this morning goes to this justice ministry. Please give generously.
we gather this day around this table. No matter where you are, no matter who is around you, if you feel isolated and alone, know that you are not, that you are here in this place with us, worshiping God, surrounding this table of grace. It is God who sent Jesus into the world that we might rejoice in the coming of Christ. So gather your elements for this communion sacrament and join in this feast. Let us pray. Come, Spirit of holiness, as we celebrate the one who has come into our midst. Come, restorer of our empty hearts, and rebuild our ruined souls shattered by stress. Come, good news for our longing ears, and speak to us of God's love and hope in us. Come, life giver, destroying sin's death grip over us forever as you lead us into resurrection. Come, cradle of our hearts, so we, as we drink the cup of grace, bitterness may become benevolence, cynicism may transform into compassion, and fear may be recast into faithfulness. Pour out your Holy Spirit, O God, upon these gifts of bread and cup, that the bread we break and the cup we bless may be the body and blood of our Lord, and may we rejoice and sing your praises until we feast at your table in glory. Amen. On the night of betrayal and desertion, after supper, during supper, Jesus took the bread and gave thanks to God and broke it. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, Jesus took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant sealed in my blood, shed for the forgiveness of sins. Every time you drink it, remember me. As often as you eat this bread and you drink this cup, you proclaim the saving death of our risen Lord until he comes. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us join in the post-communion prayer. We give you thanks, almighty God, that you have brought us from darkness to light, from slavery to freedom, from death to rebirth. Transform our lives with this heavenly food that we may shine with your love and take to the world the risen life of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. And now we will depart with a heart to serve. We sing our final hymn and depart. of God, go out from wherever you are this day, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit and Christ in our lives, knowing that Christ can't stay in the manger, that Christ goes out into the world, as we do as well, to share God's love to the world. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you now and forevermore. Amen. Amen.